Hello, dear friends. It's a pleasure to greet you again. Today we have with us the esteemed Igor Mikhailovich Danilo. Greetings. Katarina. Good day. And Robert. Greetings. Nowadays, there is an increased concentration of crisis in the world, and these crises compound one another. They overlap and exacerbate an already difficult situation in which all people around the world now find themselves. You know, we see that a lot of people realize that what we talked about at the conferences, forums, and in our videos, alas, is coming true right before their eyes. And people notice that, because we talked about the progressing climate cataclysms, the economic crisis, the geopolitical crisis, the energy crisis, and the food crisis, which is now front-page news in the world media. And, you know, the crises are actually getting worse, meanwhile, less time remains. However, thank God, there are people who understand that it is necessary to change this very global principle of life for all of humanity. They see a way out of this dead end in building a creative format of society. At the same time, these people have an inner anxiety. Isn't the Creative Society project developing too slowly? And do we really have a chance to implement this Creative Society project in time? I think slowly. Slowly. Very slowly. What can we implement with such a speed of Creative Society development, right, friends? But let's look at this from another perspective. Let's do it. The Creative Society project, let's say, was brought to life only two years ago, wasn't it? Right. Yet, what is the scale of this project now? It is huge. Yes. Name a single organization or any project that has ever had such a speed of growth in the world. It looks good from such a perspective. It does. Let's also look from another perspective. No one injected funds into this project. There is no media support whatsoever, at all. They are just slinging mud. There is nothing else. It's a project carried out by people themselves, right? By people, right? Yes. Yet, it develops at such a pace it is the only project in the entire history, in the entire history of humanity, that is developing at such a speed, at such a pace, with so many people doing it voluntarily at their own expense, friends. And there is no real help from any serious organizations or anything else. So, does it develop slowly? That's how consciousness deceives. Right. Do you know who says that the project develops slowly? Those who do nothing. Even some of our participants say, well, what do you mean it is developing? Where? There's nothing. Who says that? Again, those who do not take part in projects, those who do not meet with people. Basically, those who seem to be in the Creative Society project, but on the other hand, they are not interested in anything. They… Watch from afar. No, from afar. There are people who watch from afar in general, while those ones sit very close by, but they do not see anything beyond, let's say, their room. They communicate only with those whom they see, and that's all. So they say, there's nothing there anymore, and that's it. How's that? It grows slowly. In fact, it grows at a very high speed. And answering your second question as to whether we'll make it in time or not, I would say, my friends, it depends on us whether we'll make it in time or not. Again, some of our fellows who may hear about the Creative Society project for the first time, who are watching us accidentally, will say, where should we make it in time? Why should we make it in time? This is also a question. Where do you rush? Yes, where do you rush? Well, here we would like and need to answer somehow softly. Let's say, we should build the Creative Society before the consumerist format we now live in brings us to something inevitable. We'll put it mildly. So, will we make it in time or not? If we want to, we will, right? Igor Mikhailovich, the time of crisis in which we are living, such a turbulent, very difficult time. Very difficult. Can we say that it is more difficult to develop the creative society at this time? At this time, the time of crises, it's more difficult to develop anything, whatever it may be. Yet, a crisis is actually a wonderful time to change something. Why? Because now people see and understand everything. We spoke about 
in the times when there were no crises, when everything was fine and calm. Well, relatively calm, but still calm, right? People did not listen to us then. But when they themselves see it now, I'm not talking about the crisis in the economy, about geopolitics and wars. We skip that now. And we skip the human factor. But we are now talking about climate. Only a fool doesn't see the changes that are really happening to the climate. Any average person who can at least calculate simple things, such as two plus two and the like, can add everything up and see the progression with which it is increasing. By it, I mean disastrous climate changes that are already happening indeed, and they are gaining momentum at such an impetuous speed that one can calculate how much time remains for us as humanity to exist in more or less normal conditions, not so much time. And exactly the creative society can change that. It's the most acceptable for everyone, right? Right. Right. I mean, it's the only acceptable form, there is no other way to call it, which would suit nearly all people. Well, there will certainly be those whom it won't suit. You know, there is always a Baba Yaga who is against everything. That's true. Why? Because the creative society implies the absence of anyone's power as such over people. Meanwhile, some people who have no chances at all to have this power, but they don't want to be unable to have power in the future, so they get upset, don't they? It's the same as the limitation of wealth. This is one of the issues. It's an acute subject, the most acute issue of the project. Yes, it's acute. It's a very acute subject. Do you know who is indignant, my friends? Who is the most indignant and against the limitation of wealth? The one who has no money. You see? And he won't have it in the foreseeable future, but consciousness tells him, Someday, you will hit the jackpot, you'll get lucky. Right. You'll become an oligarch. While these guys have introduced the limitation of wealth, this is unacceptable. But precisely, oligarchs who have a lot of money actually support the limitation of wealth so that they would gain freedom and break away from this sack, so to say, which they got into. This is true because they don't feel good either. But they are in this situation as hostages, the hostages of their money and status, and many people depend on them. Thus, they are forced to exist in such conditions where they wouldn't like to exist anymore, because they understand that money doesn't solve anything. Yes, it can solve many things, but not what a person really needs. Do you know what a person wants? To freely walk in the street, to breathe the air, to meet people, to smile, to rejoice, to live, to live as a human being. That's what life is all about, about communication, about meetings. This is a full-fledged normal life. Can an oligarch live like that? He cannot. It's difficult. Of course, excuse me, for an oligarch to go to a toilet, a dozen special services of some kind should check it first, and so on. What if somebody puts a bomb there or something else? Is that really life? Just say honestly. And in order for him to… well, I don't know. I haven't seen a single oligarch who can stop just like that, enter any cafe, sit down to peacefully drink coffee like normal living people do, and have a conversation with one of his friends. No, there are plenty of conventionalities and a lot of security issues. The more money, the more problems, that's true. And those who own that money know it. Igor Mikhailovich, I remember you said that among the eight foundations of the Creative Society, there are two foundations which are sort of a stumbling block yes. for every person. Yes. The first one is what we have just voiced, the limitation of wealth. Wealth. And the second one is the issue of unification, that all of us should unite. Right. These are basically the two points which either consciousness inside us resists a little bit, or we do not fully understand these points. Well, let's speak honestly. The issue of unification repels much more than that of the limitation of wealth. Right. Isn't it true? It is. So many people just don't understand, they don't understand. what unification is. Yes. Let's put it simply, friends. What does unification in the Creative Society project entail? Just answer to yourselves. Do we actually unite families? No. Do we unite wallets? No. No. Do we unite vegetable gardens, those who have them? No. No. We don't, right? We don't. Do we unite cultures? Cultures. Or cultures. Or will everyone march in unison? under one flag and sing the same songs as a result of unification, or what? Right. 
That is, you know, people frightened by communism and many other formats of such totalitarian regimes start getting scared simply without going into the essence of the creative society, you see? Well, that's just laziness and stupidity, I'm sorry. I'm calling things by their proper names, why? Because unification in the creative society implies unification on an idea, on the improvement of the quality of everyone's life, our life and your life, friends. It is directed precisely towards making life better, more beautiful and safer. Excuse me, I will say it straightforwardly and simply, so that you, my friend, can live in a safe world, so that your life is valued more than anything else in the world. We should unite precisely on that, you see? Not just your life, but the lives of your loved ones, your family and friends. That's what unification is all about, to build a world where no one ever feels hungry, simply so that everyone has enough water, food and clothing. I'll give you a simple example. As of today, what is the current norm of housing per person in square meters? I don't know what it is in your country, honestly. I don't know either. I believe in our country it is 13.5 square meters, isn't it? I only know what the norm is in the office, that's also… Okay, in the office per person. In the person. office, it is 8 square meters. Per person. Per person. Per person. So did they work? Well, I don't know. To be honest, it varies from country to country. But in our country, yes, I think it's 13.5 square meters. But we have… Let me give you a simple example. We have friends, people, and many of us lived in cramped conditions with three people living in 36 square meters. For instance, a simple question, is it comfortable or cozy for a person from a physiological point of view? Indeed, it's tough. It's tough. According to all the norms, not those invented by people, you know. I'll put it simply, not just people, but officials, let's call them so. They need to reduce the norms somehow, to minimize them so that a person would survive. I emphasize not live freely, but survive. So they decided that we should have 13.5 square meters per person. I may be wrong, maybe the norms have changed now, but it's something like that. Well, for comfortable living, and it was calculated a long time ago, there should be at least 60 square meters, that is, a person's bedroom, should not be less than 21 square meters. If it is less than that, a person feels uncomfortable. The same applies to a person eating in the kitchen. Well, many of us eat in the kitchen at home, right? We cook there, have a table and we eat there. So, if the kitchen is less than 20 square meters, it turns out that a person is not supposed to eat in it, you see? In other words, eating there is not quite physiological. Why? The space is cramped, it is pressing, even for normal people, not for those who suffer from claustrophobia. Plus, there surely must be a room, also of the same size, at least 20 square meters, where a person could do sports or, I don't know, watch TV or just lie on a sofa. It should also be at least that size. This is to have comfort. It's for one person, friends. And imagine a family of, let's say, four people. How many square meters should there be? 60 multiplied by 4 equals 240. 240 square meters is the minimum housing for a father, a mother, and two children. Nowadays, an apartment of 240 square meters, for example, costs significant money everywhere, right? Right. For a young family that has little kids… Impossible. It's a problem, right? It's a problem, isn't it? It is. But in the creative society, this should be guaranteed for each and everyone. That's the minimum that should be the basis. It should be allocated to everyone. Well, you know, it's a minimal standard. You can have more, but you cannot have less, and it will be this way. Some people say, there won't be enough space, there are so many people, we have almost 8 billion, where are we going to find enough housing to accommodate everyone? My friends, if we approach this correctly and here, just look, what is the advantage of the creative society? The advantage is that there is no concept of a lack of money. Why? Everything belongs to people, even during the transition period. There is no shortage of resources because everything belongs to people. At the moment, all the restrictions and problems arise because the states are competing with each other. Yes. Right. Actually, not the states, but the oligarchy, which belongs to a particular group, to one or another country. You see? There is always a small group of people who consider themselves to be the state. 
so they compete with others, as if for the benefit of all people who live in one or another country. But if something happens, people are sacrificed without consideration. They are like expendable material. That's the truth of life, isn't it? It is. It is. People are killed mercilessly and taxed, you see? All Social Security and all other benefits are cut down. Why? Because people are a resource, nothing more. While in the creative society, a human is the most important and the main unit, you see? It cannot be otherwise. That's how it should be. And that's what unification is based upon. Unification in order to improve the quality of life of each of us, so that we can leave a true legacy to our descendants, a true one. This is freedom. That freedom, which people have always been fighting for, for which they made revolutions, for which people went to revolt and died. It is that freedom for which people stood up against the enemy. For their state, allegedly they were fighting for freedom. They were saving their state. But what did they get afterwards? Let's put it simply. Did any of them get freedom? Only those at the top of the revolution, you know, who got into power on this wave. For those, yes, the conditions are good, but what about the rest? The rest live the same as before. Or even worse. Or worse. Or worse yes. What revolution has ever improved the state? Tell me. None. 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 It's impossible to improve through destruction, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. So, the principle of the creative society is to first build something better and then remove what exists now. And not to go ahead and ruin or as some people think, yes, the creative society means they come and take everything from the rich, give it to the poor, spend it all, and that's where it stops. They take the resources you have in your cellar. Absolutely right. A person canned food, stored potatoes, but then it was distributed among destitute neighbors, right? Potatoes, grain, everything was brought together and divided equally, right? No, friends, it's not like that. I'll say it again. Unification in the creative society implies an ideological unification of all people for the purpose of creating a single electoral demand all over the world. That is, for implementing the eight foundations and the constitution of every country. After that, there will be unification of the entire humanity, you see, in one direction so that the world is united. We are not talking about, well, some people say it means to destroy countries. Not at all. Why destroy countries? Why destroy cultures? Why remove languages? Well, if we look at it properly, yes, there should be one common language, which one is up to people to decide. People should decide among themselves, and all the power should belong to people. Some also start saying, how is that? Are we supposed to? How will we govern? You won't govern. You will adopt laws that are acceptable or unacceptable to you. But believe me, there will be very few of them. As of today, a lot of good laws have been introduced. Read your constitutions, how you should live, and look at the reality of how you live. The difference is essential. It is. Isn't it? That's true. Yes. Right. This applies to all countries and all people in this world. While in the creative society, laws must be enforced. Again, enforced by whom? By all of us, by everyone. We ourselves will adopt laws that influence our lives if we need to change something somewhere. With modern technology, it will take about five minutes, maybe once a month, to read for and against, to adopt a law and to vote, you see? As simple as that. This is the key point. It is also interesting that you've said that there are laws and they are already introduced, yet what thought does consciousness come up with? That something should be changed upside down, drastically, since there is creative society. Of course. It means something special should be introduced at the legislative level. I mean, there are some isolated… It should be. The eight foundations. The eight foundations. Yes. So, basically, everything is already stipulated in the Constitution. Again, to begin with for its implementation. The creative society should, so to say, rest, first of all, on laws, the laws of any country, international laws and everything else. We must not violate any laws, subordinate legislation or anything else. There mustn't be any aggression or any destruction. There mustn't be anything like that. Why? Because any destruction means that we destroy our home. Any confrontation is a confrontation among ourselves. It's a confrontation amongst each other. This is stupid and wrong. Do you understand? That's the point. All we have to do is to reach out to people who haven't heard about the Creative Society and know nothing about it. We should tell and explain what the Creative Society really is. If people want to, they join the project. 
afterwards, when there is simply a prevailing majority of people all over the world who want to build the creative society, let's say, a common electoral demand arises. And that's it. Well, if necessary, referendums may be held and many other things. It is up to lawyers to decide how to stipulate that in the legislation and do it according to the law, you see? But it should be, well, I want to say and explain once again, before we impose the Creative Society on anyone, we should understand that it must be beneficial and, I'll say it again, very acceptable for each and everyone, you see? including those who are now in power. They should see the benefit and the real way out of the situation in the creative society. That's how it should be elaborated, right? And that's how it should be implemented, so that it benefits the oligarchs, so that it benefits, as they say, the shadow government, the elites, the elites and all. Are they not people? Wait, are they made of stone or arranged in some other way? And, in case of further development of those very climatic events, God grant, we live long enough to see those climatic events. As of today, geopolitical events are such that, perhaps, we shouldn't even be afraid of climate, right? Isn't that so? It is. Right. And tell me, who doesn't want to live? Who doesn't want their children and great-grandchildren to live? Don't the elite want this? And again, everyone blames the elite. Yet, let's face the truth honestly. People say there is an elite that rules the world. There surely is. That's true. There is the elite, and they rule the world. Thank God. Imagine what would happen if there were no elite. We are in the consumerist format, and without any framework of control, pure market relations, without global interests of certain groups, we would have killed each other off a long time ago, you see? Isn't it so? It is. Right. It is. Therefore, we should even be thankful that there is the elite and that the world is somehow ordered nowadays. Just look at what is going on. Wars, redivisions. Well, it's natural, you know. When one king becomes weaker, another king immediately wants to occupy his place and position. This is normal in nature. This has been going on for thousands of years. Again, everyone wants to have such a powerful, huge country so that it would be the strongest to rebuild or restore an empire. Let's look into history. We have always had a lot of various empires, the Roman Empire and whatnot, right? Well, some people dream of restoring those empires again. It's good. In the consumerist format, it is right and good. A country must be strong, powerful, and competitive. And the more territory and people it has, the bigger and wider the opportunity is. I don't see anything wrong with that in the consumerist format. Who doesn't fight for that? As of today, let's not list them, but everyone does. Let's put it so, right? Yes, everyone does. Yes, everyone. Everyone. Right. Even if we watch the media, it takes place constantly. Those who have at least some opportunity fight for the future. Again, for the future of their country. Well, friends, let's think about it. Maybe we need to think about our personal future. And here's the paradox. The creative society unites the whole world. It makes the whole world one big family. But the creative society is for each and everyone, you see? This is the paradox of the creative society. It is for all of us. But at the same time, it is for you, my friend. First and foremost, it is the format that can make your life beautiful, happy, and absolutely safe. And most importantly, the only option that is acceptable to all of us is that format of the creative society, in which we can find what we can use to oppose climate change and how, in reality. And in reality, we will be able to preserve our planet and save our lives together with you, friends, the lives of each of us. So is it worth doing it or not? Yes, of course. Of course. And you know, as of today, there are a lot of people who understand and know that. First and foremost, a lot of intelligent and literate people, and not indifferent, not indifferent to their own lives and to the lives of their relatives and friends. So they First of all, know and understand what is happening to the climate in reality, not even to politics, not even to the economy, but to the climate, and understand all the looming threats that nowadays disastrously affect geopolitics, business, and lead to serious clashes at the geopolitical level, and so on. 
They understand that a little time will pass and the situation will be much worse. Everywhere the crisis will progress and it will be impossible to stop them. Understanding and knowing that, they joined the Creative Society in the first place. Why? Because they are literate, intelligent people. Let's all become smarter. Let's stop shifting responsibility onto someone else. You see, by shifting responsibility onto someone else, we deprive ourselves of the future, ourselves first and foremost. What we are talking about is not far off, and we really don't have much time, as Tatiana said. We don't want to name dates and don't want to scare you, although it has all been calculated and known a long time ago. In fact, those who are already born might not live to adulthood. This is worth thinking about, you see? And it depends on us whether they will live to adulthood or not. Well, there's something to fight for. Right. Isn't it so? It is. It is. Yes, I understand that as of today, people have a lot of questions and a lot of misunderstandings about some issues relating precisely to the Creative Society. Right. But, friends of mine, what do all of us gather in this project for? A simple question, exactly for eliminating all the misunderstandings, you know? The Creative Society is, first and foremost, you, my friend. It is us and millions of other people. Unfortunately, not billions. Although, I wish there were billions already. Yes. But thank God there are millions. We should probably try to clarify all these misunderstandings so that people would join and, and there wouldn't be those barriers. That's right. And we should think all together, not just join, but also think about what to improve and how, what to do and how. Now we have one very simple task before us, informing. It is the most difficult period and the most protracted. After that, everything will move very quickly, if we want that. Igor Mikhailovich, some people say that we merely inform. Meanwhile, they already live in the Creative Society, they have a family, housing, they also have a community, a bio garden, and they have already built the Creative Society on a small scale, while we just talk. Liars and fantasists are those people who say that they already live in the Creative Society. They think that if they have created their bio garden and have a good family, they do not depend on the outside world and they are safe, huh? Yes, exactly. A simple example. Will a nuclear war not affect them? Of course. Will they survive? I mean, friends, just think. How will they exist in their, what was it, biosphere under a nuclear war? or under climate change, which unfolds every day. It doesn't affect them, does it? As well as other crises, do they not apply to them? That's what they say. Crime, hunger and everything else, those are egoists who hope that if they have isolated themselves and created something for themselves, they do not care about anything else, you see? Yes, exactly. I mean, but in fact, I'll tell you, those are the most cowardly and mean people. That's true. Why? They abandon everyone out of fear, you see? Like renegades, you know? They have isolated themselves. Right. Just imagine, I'll put it simply, rudely, if I may, but simply, there is an asshole in a family who is so selfish that he abandons his family and says, I don't want to know you. You are no good. And now, I'll build a house with a vegetable garden for myself, and I will live and grow foods there, while you can go hungry and do whatever you like, right? So, he is actually a renegade in the family. Why? Because of fear, in fact. Because he feels his own helplessness. So instead of standing like a hero, facing the problem and starting to solve it, like millions of people do today in the Creative Society, no, such people isolate themselves, they run away. There is another, a bit of a different thing, when there are business people and those who say, okay, even if you build a creative society, how do you want to solve problems? All of us will have to get together, we vote for something and decide? The process will be very slow. Meanwhile, we will need to do something. I understand the question. They have a misunderstanding here. For example, we have an issue that needs to be urgently solved. For example, a logistics issue related to the fact that we have grown crops and it needs to be properly distributed or transported somewhere. So we should all get together and engage in solving this issue. Or we need to build some factories, okay? Yes. So we are supposed to get together and solve that. Yes. Well, I'll put it this way. I will not participate in that. Why? I'm not versed in logistics. Honestly, 
and I'm not versed in factory construction, you see. What would I be doing there? We'll make a general plan. Who should handle that? It should be handled by specialists. Likewise, specialists, precisely specialists, should deal with both economics and economic planning. And the economy must be planned, first and foremost. Why? Because it has a huge advantage over spontaneous decisions. You see? Today, we do not have enough wheat, hence we have to solve this problem. In a market economy, this is possible. But even in a normal state, everything must be planned for years in advance, because there is a huge advantage. While in the creative society, naturally, we should take into account the number of people, what they need, and of what quality. And the quality must be the best, again, because it's for people. It is you and us who should create laws, friends. That's what we should do. Where we should stipulate that our products must be of the highest quality, that our healthcare must be of the highest quality for each and every person equally across the world. And there mustn't be such a situation that a child gets sick, but the state has no money. So parents are forced to collect money and go to another country to have their child treated. After all, such situations yes. do happen. Yes. There mustn't be such situations. There mustn't be situations where, excuse me, there is a young family and they have nowhere to live. They live with their parents or somewhere else, creating some kind of discomfort. Or they are forced to rent housing, pay most of the money they earn for housing, and starve themselves. That's the case in this world, in our world. It is sort of normal in our world. Yet, do you really want your children and grandchildren to live like that? You don't, neither do I. Therefore, what do we need? We need the state, or rather, it's not a state, it's a society. We cannot call it a state. The creative society is a community. Well, people will decide what to call it what it should be called later on. So, my friend, in the creative society, at least 60 square meters should be guaranteed to your child just because he was born. As for everything else, it should be handled by specialists, in the literal sense of the word. Economists should deal with the economy, builders should deal with construction. Everything will be right. in its place. I'll put it simply, a cook shouldn't govern a country. Right. And neither should the rest of us who have nothing to do with running the country. Yes, people can learn everything. I agree. But you know, in the consumerist format, a person can become a tyrant by simply surrounding himself with his friends and creating good conditions for them, favorable for the tyrant to exist. He can appoint them to governing positions, for instance, in the army or in various agencies, and that's it. You can do nothing about that. No one can do anything and people are defenseless before him. However, this cannot happen in the creative society, right? Yes, there has to be an administrative apparatus. Those are people whom society hires, but it also monitors them, you see? It cannot be otherwise. A person must be responsible before the whole society for any kind of corruption schemes or wrongdoings. Why? Because he has harmed society. While this is unacceptable. Igor Mikhailovich, there is the following question. Will those who are now in power, or those who are now high-ranking politicians and the like, be held responsible in the creative society for those actions and decisions, and perhaps for their mistakes, which they now make in the consumerist format of society? You know, as of today, there are people who must be held responsible before the entire society. They have deserved that. Of course, they won't be. Why? Because if we approach this from such a standpoint, as you say, then we all must be held responsible. Because we are the ones who shape the consumerist format, my friends. And each of us is responsible. Each of us is responsible for having a tyrant in our country or in any other country. Right. Each of us is responsible for the fact that children are being killed. It doesn't matter if it is war, maniacs, or whatever else, because there is no security. There is no protection for our people, children and ourselves either. Each of us is responsible for the fact that there are hungry and needy people in this world. Each of us. And each of us has to answer for that in such a case. Perhaps let us introduce a general amnesty and start our future with a clean slate. But in that future, knowing and understanding all human weaknesses, we will write the laws in such a way that none of us could go beyond humaneness.
so that we do not slide back into the consumerist format where beastliness and inhumanity reign. Maybe it's better to do it this way. It is. Right. Right? As for what has happened, it has happened. As of today, it exists. But hopefully, if all of us want that, my friends, everything will change. And what exists will become our past. This may happen very quickly and very soon. Right? Yes, of course. In fact, does anything hinder us? Nothing. Nothing. We should just want that and do that. Right. We just shouldn't sit idle and should simply do that, should act. Many people want to act, but they don't understand what to do and how. Yes, also how. Right. Action implies informing by all possible legal means. I emphasize once again, without violating anyone's rights and without offending anyone at that, we should inform people about the Creative Society. That's the only way, right? I understand that. It's just when I look out of a window in our office, I see they are building a house there. They've been building it for more than a year. They've been constructing a foundation of the building yes. for a year now. The house should be of 11 stories, and it should be built by the end of this year. That means informing is foundation. the foundation. It takes so long, yes. That is why it takes so long, so that what we build on it will stand just fine and… Forever. Solidly. Forever. Yes. Why? Because, again, the Creative Society creates conditions for our society to become a civilization. Civilization, we often say civilization, our civilization, the past civilization, but we've never been a civilization. Do you understand? If civilization is formed, it is formed forever. Civilization is a unification of all people, a real unity based on one idea. It is the absence of power in the first place. There can be no civilization where uncivilized methods exist. While power, any power of any person over any other people is not a civilized solution. As for administration, of course, it should be there. Again, why should a person, a specialist, do what he knows how to do? This is the right approach. Yes. If we do everything at once, we will do nothing. We'll just go extinct, right? And in order for everything to be organized in the right way, professionals should deal with these matters. Those very rulers we have now have tremendous experience and they can use it for the benefit of people. Do you think they don't want to? They do. They really do. They just don't understand the benefits, the ones they will gain in the Creative Society. They don't understand the benefits which their children will gain in the Creative Society. After all, what does a person need, in fact? It is clear that in the consumerist format, one should be richer in order to survive somehow and to have something. That's why many people do such inhuman acts in order to gain at least something and to leave a legacy, you know? As of today, I'll put it simply, for whom is this legacy? And what is it for? You know, it's like the limitation of wealth. I'll put it simply, yes, if a person has a lot of money, and while the Creative Society is built, he should limit himself to, I don't know, it's up to people to decide what amount, what the threshold should be. Let's put it simply, $10 million. Okay, it's like, if a person has billions, yet they limit him to 10 million and so forth. But guys, this is only for the transition period. It will actually pass very quickly, and money will cease to exist in the Creative Society at all. You know, it's like a relic of our modern times where money is at the head of everything, and we all fight over it, because it is something for which we can exchange some benefits for ourselves. Yet, why do you need this money when you have all the benefits? A simple question. Right. As for the point that money is about to disappear, guys, I'm telling you honestly, it will be so. The only question is in what way? Either by transitioning from the consumer's format to a creative one, and then, with the development of the creative society, money will simply not be needed, or in another way when it just won't be needed at all. There will be no buyers and nothing to buy. As for the fact that it will take place, I'm just saying that nowadays only a stupid person doesn't really understand that. Excuse me for being straightforward, because it is such a time. Just look outside, open your eyes, and look at the progression. I'm saying it once again, look at the progression and calculate. Take a ruler, a calculator, 
and you yourselves will figure everything out and calculate when all this is going to happen. It's a very important understanding that money exists only during the transition period. Of course. Because our friends and I were also discussing that many people say money is a tool of exploitation. Yes. Yes. And you are now talking about the creative society and the fact that there should be no money, there should be no wages, because as long as there is money, there is exploitation of some people. By others, yes, of That's course. loans, power. And the power of one person over another. Yes. The one who has money has power over the one who doesn't have it, right? But again, why should money remain during the transition period? Why? Because, excuse me, for 6,000 years we've been divided. We have been taught how to live separately. We have been taught how to earn money in unthinkable, inhumane ways. But at the same time, we've been habituated to using money. We understand this form. We cannot just go ahead and eliminate it right away. Why? Because we have no experience. Yes. But when we form this experience, it can be a fairly short period of time. Money may continue to exist for, say, five years. I'm speaking figuratively, maybe ten. It's all up to us, friends. But no longer than that. Why? Because this is pointless. I'll explain it to you simply. As of today, there are a lot of technologies that already exist, but cannot be implemented in the consumerist format. These technologies will make our life such that even science fiction writers have never described it. There will be simply no need for money, you see? Simply no need for it. What does money give us? Clothes. What else does it give us? Food, some entertainment, even… Hierarchy. Hierarchy. Hierarchy disappears instantly. This is the creative society. Everyone is equal. No matter what kind of a boss a person is, he is at work and does his job. And his job is no different than that of a street cleaner. There is more responsibility, so the punishment may be more severe. Meanwhile, a street cleaner makes our world beautiful and clean too. You see? Nowadays we have a division, a street cleaner and a minister. You know, there is a difference. Yes. Why? A minister means power. He writes laws and manages people's lives. Whereas there, excuse me, people's lives are managed by people. That very street cleaner manages people's lives, including the life of that minister. Do you understand the difference? A person who takes the job, let's say, according to the modern equivalent, a minister's chair, I mean, someone who manages an infrastructure or something else, I don't know, construction or agriculture, is a person who is versed in agriculture. So, naturally, someone has to coordinate these activities. And he is no longer a minister, but a coordinator. He simply does his job responsibly, but absolutely transparently, and everyone monitors and sees him. Even at the time when money will still exist during the transition period, even then, excuse me, as of today, there is, let's take that very Voskhod, MPC. It was created precisely for the transition period in the creative society. Why? It's a system capable of controlling everyone and everything, every penny across the world. In other words, it's a system capable of serving not just an individual state, but the entire world, all states. And no one, not a single person, will be able to steal, cheat, or do anything wrong. It's really true. It's enough to connect the system, and we all become honest and decent people. That's one side. The other side is that there will be no poor people and beggars, you see? Meaning, there is a basic income that is allocated to everyone by right. As for everything else, the surplus, we go and earn what we want. What does it mean? Again, should a person have a place to live? He should. It should be beautiful, not bad. Well, for someone, 60 square meters is not enough. He wants 600 square meters. A person wants that. He wants to have a golden toilet there. If he wants it, let him have it. Let him earn money. He just needs to go to work and earn it. But again, labor should be paid differently. Again, should a person pay for gas, electricity, and everything else in his apartment? Of course not, because these are the resources that belong to us, right? In other words, these are the resources that do not belong to some oligarch who sells them to us for as much as he likes. It is our common property, the property of everyone on this planet. Therefore, we should have it all for free. Well, some people will say, that's expensive, and things like that. And guys, here's a simple answer. If we have 60 square meters per person, for example, he has an apartment, he doesn't have to pay anything for it at all. But as long as money exists, he should certainly give something to that very street cleaner for cleaning the territory. How can it be otherwise? From his basic income, the one that society gives him. While this basic income should include everything, in other words, there has to be enough money for meals, food, entertainments, and even a car. 
Not a luxury one, but a medium class, he is a good van. Right. decent car, so that a person feels like a normal, decent person. This is what should be given for free. But if a person wants a bigger house and wants to drive, pardon me, not an average car, well, let's take an analogy of a modern, for instance, Korean car, okay? Okay. But a person wants to drive a Mercedes, for example and live in a house of 600 square meters, pardon me, he should cover expenses for 600 square meters and electricity at cost, I emphasize, but he should pay for everything. Why? Because it's a surplus, right? Right. In the transition period, that's where we get used to paying for the surplus. But you have more of something, I don't know, your own golf course, or whatever, or what else can be there. Maybe a person has, as you said, a hobby, he enjoys cleaning, he needs more square footage. Yes, that's also possible, it can be. If a person gets up in the morning and cleans 60 square meters within five minutes, but he is accustomed to cleaning for two hours every morning, you see, just mopping the floors, Right. so he needs a big house. There are various cases, nobody minds, it's all right and normal. But again, if a person has built or bought a house, Nobody has the right to tax him for his property. Ownership implies that you own it. It is your personal... How can your personal property be taxed? Or a car. The community allotted it to you, or you bought a car. You purchased it from the manufacturer. Everyone has earned money on it. The community has certainly earned money too. That's understandable. In other words, the money has been distributed. Yet, you have to pay a tax for that. Well, in some countries they have that. It's ridiculous. It means depriving people of their rights. It is, let's say, an aggravation of the consumerist format, where some people never have enough. In the consumerist format, neither the state nor its rulers will ever have enough money. And all the more people who live in those states, while in the creative society, believe me, everyone will have enough of everything with a surplus, even in the transition period. Yes, we have faced the following situation regarding Boschot. And people ask a question that, how are we going to ensure that the ones who will supervise Boschot will not use it against humanity? Do you mean Voskhod and PC? Yes. Yes. Guys, in the consumer's format, no one will give any guarantee. Why? Because it's a tool. As of today, everyone is simply scared of it. Why? A simple example. Why hide this? Yes, there were inquiries about Voskhod. Let's say, even if the top leaders of a state are interested in it, you know, at least maybe as a tool for themselves. But there is such a bureaucratic layer between people and a ruler. So it is always against. Why? Because these are murky waters. That's where all the corruption and all the theft is taking place. They steal so much that in any country. And here a system appears which makes it possible to identify any corruptionists, any schemes and everything else. Well, it's natural that they don't want that, of course. But on the one hand, it is good for the state. The state can save a lot of money. This money can be redirected to some creative field or social development in that very state. Everything is great. However, the top leader can also use this very tool to arrange a truly totalitarian regime. Indeed. Why? Because no one will escape anywhere. The top leader can know about everything, about every penny and about everyone. Who stole what and from whom? That means controlling everything and everyone. Of course, it can be a tool to strengthen somebody's power. Yes. Yes. But that's in the consumerist format. Yet, how is it in the creative format? Excuse me. In this format, only those are identified who really try to violate some legislation during the transition period, while money still exists. Yes. You know, out of habit. Format. Well, we've just... Now we are in the consumerist format, and imagine that tomorrow we would move to the creative format. But the habit of stealing has remained. We lived that way. It's true. We got used to corruption. We did. A person comes to me, so should I sign a piece of paper for him for free if I'm a corruptionist? Well, it is still... Well, in that case, it turns out that you sign a piece of paper for a fee. And that's it. The system already knows about it. So this is partly an educational moment. Yes, of course. In the creative society, no one will be able to use the complex to the detriment of humanity or community. In other words, it was created precisely for the transition period in the creative society, in order to adapt people much faster. After all, who commits crimes and why are they committed? They are committed in the hope that there will be no punishment. 
If a person knows for sure that punishment is inevitable, there will be no crime. But we are talking only about Voskhod, MPC. Right. right. Yet, there are also other systems. Yes. For instance, many people will say, how are you going to fight crime, my friends? Believe me, technology doesn't stand still. And in the creative society, there will be technology. I emphasize, it is guaranteed to be in the creative society as soon as we enter it. It's a technology that will not allow anyone to commit any crime and at the same time remain unpunished. It's a technology that will make it possible to see a person anywhere, all and sundry, and no one will disappear without a trace. This doesn't mean that there will be a totalitarian surveillance over each and every one, but it will take six seconds to find anyone, because everyone will be visible. After all, we are human beings. Likewise, the punishment will be inevitable. So why violate? Why commit a crime if you definitely know what you are doing? That means you go against the community. Isn't that so? Also, Igor Mikhailovich, people sincerely fear to not repeat the fate of Atlantis when there was L, because back then people were also building a creative format of society, yes. Yes. but made a mistake somewhere at some stage. They kept power. Mm -hmm. Do you see what the trouble was? Power was kept. Mm -hmm. As of today, if we consider, let's play a game, shall we? Mm -hmm. And I suggest to our friends too, let's try to answer. A global government, okay? Okay. A single global world government, the one that people are talking about a lot, you know, which everyone is raving about. The elite is striving for that. Yes. The one which everyone is railing against, the one the elite is striving for and so on. Globalization. A new world order. Is it good or bad? Tell me, is it good or bad? Honestly. A single government. A single world government. It's globalization. It's good. Yes. Globalization. Is it good or bad? People are afraid. People are often afraid of globalization. They fear it. But it's good. Okay. Why are people afraid and why is it good? Because they compare it with a new world order or… It is. Yes, it's a new world order, for right. sure. Right, and they draw a comparison that it is also the creative society. No, well… Reduction of the population. Okay, stop. Wait, okay. hold on, we've mixed it all up. Right. In the creative society, there will be a united world management anyway. Yes. Right. But that's a coordination of actions, my friends. It's people without power because it's you who have the power. Right. Yet someone should coordinate. Let's again go back to what we were talking about to make it clear for our friends. Okay. Okay. Somebody should coordinate how much we, we should grow on this planet to ensure it's enough for everybody, for your kids' cookies, for us to have a sandwich in the morning, right? Should someone calculate that? Yes. Yes. They should. Should someone calculate how many? Let's keep it simple. How many hats we need. We should know how many hats we need, even if we don't wear them. And someone has to calculate how much outerwear we need, Yes. how many sneakers we need, of what kind, and things like that. A single planned economy, right? Also hospitals, schools. Schools, right. A single planned economy, that's right. We haven't come to this subject yet. I wanted to approach it gradually. Ah, okay, sorry. Hospitals, schools, education, and everything else. Right. That's right. A single planned economy. Should someone deal with that, someone should. And who should do that? Specialists, those people who are experts in that. Yet, yeah, pardon me, who are better experts than the people who run huge countries nowadays. Their experience is colossal, and it may be useful. Now, some will say, they took corrupt people yes. and put them in charge. They already have a bad reputation. Of course! Yet, yeah. what is it like nowadays? All of us obey the authorities, we love them, but we all hate them on the sly, right. because we either envy them or are dissatisfied with something. Isn't that so? Is. Yes. We are humans, after all. We are full of contradictions, so we again take old corruptionists and put them in power. In management. Not in power and not in management, but in coordination. Management, yes, sure, let's say management of one or another sector, temporarily. As long as there is money, they may try to cheat, but let's not forget about the Voskhod MPC right. and other systems that will simply not allow corruption. This is firstly. Secondly, a person won't need that, believe me. An amnesty has just taken place. We have kind of forgiven. forgiven everyone. And first of all, we have forgiven ourselves. Yes. We have started living in a new way. A person has everything, just everything. Plus, he has a great, wonderful job where he can show himself as a specialist, doing what each and every one of us needs. And all of us will be truly grateful to him for that, right? Right. Can we not thank a person 
who will create an outstanding education system for our children everywhere across the world. It's important, I emphasize. Why? Because today we are in this country, and our children go to school in this country. Tomorrow we move to another country. Why? We want to. We are free people. It's the creative society. Our child should go to exactly the same class, and the system is the same everywhere. One or another. But it's the best in the world. Yet, someone has to decide which system is the best in the world, right? Or, my friends. Right. What school to look for in some place? Of course. Or, my friends, should it be you and I who will sit down and start negotiating? If you and I sit down and start deciding, I mean, myself, and those of you who have nothing to do with pedagogy at all. I've been in a medicine all my life, right? I didn't know it either. Robert has been in business and the like. And now we would start deciding how to teach people, or rather children. It would be a mess, first of all. We would be deciding for a couple of centuries. And secondly, we would make such decisions that, God forbid, isn't it so? It is. It is. It is. Therefore, it is better to take trained professionals who possess tremendous experience and those who are eager and willing to help humanity. Well. Again, he's an old corruptionist. He has everything in the creative society, everything is provided for him and his children. But he wants to live a little bit better. Due to his job, he has the right to earn enough. Pardon me, in such a position, even during the transition period. So let the person earn. Firstly, he will earn enough to satisfy his ambitions, even due to his habit, okay? But much less than he would steal or squander in the consumer's format, right? So, it is profitable for us. And first of all, what should we look at? Efficiency and benefit, right? What are the other benefits of globalization? Wait, what did we begin with? With the point that in the creative society, there is a united global management. Management, right. Yes. Well, again, I'll say coordination, not management, yes. but without power. In other words, they cannot make decisions that would infringe our rights. They cannot make decisions that would force us to kill each other and so on. And they cannot make decisions that would make us poor or make our lives worse. But they are obliged to make decisions that would make our lives better and more wonderful. That's what their task will be. I mean, it's exactly the opposite. What we have nowadays. And imagine something exactly the opposite, and everyone will be happy. Again, we will thank those people. But it's not a single world government. The difference here is huge. Why? Because they don't have power. Okay, there's another option. Let's just take the notorious single world government in the consumerist format. Okay. Okay? Is that good or bad? Let's imagine. We have a lot of countries now, a lot of rulers. We all live and compete with each other. We fight for everything. One wants to be cooler than another. That's understandable. Yet, now we would all unite. That is, people would appear who would manage to force all of us to unite. So we have a single government. Is it good or bad? It depends on the goals. Yes. yes. Why? All of us can march in unison sing anthems. I wouldn't like that. No. no. Or walk around with a TV set or something else. Yes. Now some people will say, why with a TV? In order to watch videos with our beloved and honorable ruler. L. Our L. So that we... L, right. Yes. Isn't that true? It is. Can it happen? It can. Yes, it can. It can. Easily. It's a single world government when one person decides everything. Everything. And knowing the human psyche, Knowing human weaknesses, we understand very well that a dragon would be reborn in him. Yes. As soon as a person gets hold of power, he ceases to be a human. This is really so. The higher the power, the less human he is. He begins to think on a large scale, losing touch with people. It seems to him that he's already in the clouds. Yes. And imagine, when a person is at the peak of power over the entire world, how much he would be off his rocker. Impunity. At first, it would be interesting, and he would try to do something good, because L did the same in history. But later on, he would get bored and start amusing himself. And that's the ruin of all humanity. It's inevitable if there is such a system, right? Right. Yet, if good people come, decent, good people, who will start taking care of the entire humanity. Is that good or bad? It's wonderful. In the consumerist format. In the consumerist format. In the consumerist format. Do you know what it gives? Now, a lot of people will begin to revile, but I will explain that it's an alternative to the creative society. Why? We have no other alternative. 
In fact, it's the only alternative to the creative society in order to preserve our world, to preserve our future, so that you and I, let's say, could have tea in the year 2037 or celebrate the new year 2038, for example. Well, that's wonderful, that's interesting. Pay attention to these beautiful numbers. Would you like to celebrate another new year? You have the opportunity, right? So for that to happen, there should also be an alternative if people don't want the creative society. They don't want everything to be good. They want L. to live in the consumerist format and not to change anything. Then the only option is exactly a single world government. Why? All the resources are in their hands, all the money is in their hands, and they give us orders while we execute them. Only they will be able to gather all the scientific potential and all the resources in order to counter, first, to find what to use as a counteraction, what actually affects the climate and how, to study this problem. Some people will say, it's clear, it's understandable. It is neither clear nor understandable, my friends. It is serious and global. We should find an opportunity, what to use as a counteraction and how, so that the world remains and is saved, so that you and I remain on this little planet. It's worth it. And when the question is whether to live or die, I think it's even better to live, even if there is L. Why? The chance to live at least for a while, to prolong life even for a year, means a lot. And if you prolong the life of all humankind for many centuries to come, is that bad? Fortunately, we still have the alternative of building precisely the creative society. The creative society, yes. As an option, yes. But on the other because, hand... after all, the global elites are most likely aiming towards reducing the population. Absolutely. The first thing that will be done is to reduce the population. Let's say, at least 15 of 16 people must cease to exist. But the only question here, my friends, is where will you get into? Are you going to be the 16th, or are you going to get into those 15? Right? That's in order to form at least some kind of symbiosis of humanity with our planet. Well, there will be no symbiosis, but at least there would be less harm. This is the minimum that needs to be done. But humanity will be preserved. Right? That's already better than nothing. There are huge advantages from that. Yes. Firstly, all wars stop at once. Right. Why? There is no one who would fight and no one to do it against. Order will begin to be restored, indeed. I guess science will develop somehow too? Of course, science, everything that is kept in caches and today cannot be implemented in the consumerist format of this order will all begin to develop. A surge of science is guaranteed. Moreover, almost the same technology as in the creative society will be available to people under a single world government. This means a lot. These are serious breakthroughs. The only thing is that you won't have power, and it's clear that you will live under a dictatorship. But maybe that's better, you see? People are used to shifting responsibility onto someone else. Yes. Well, in that case, there's someone to shift the responsibility to. There will be someone who will take care of us. Maybe that's an option too, right? We sit idly and do nothing. First of all, look, we don't have to do anything. Right. We don't have to waste personal time and personal funds to build the creative society. Neither do we have to convince people who don't even want to hear about the creative society and tell them, my friend, you benefit from this. We are fighting for you, my friend. So hear this. Why do we need to tell them that? Well, in this case, we sit quietly, wait, and hope. In fact, the most interesting thing is that when building the creative society and informing, people actually don't have to do anything either except informing. Just telling people, yes. Many people think that it is somehow difficult, that it is really… You see? Well, in fact, if you are sitting at the round table with your relatives, just tell them. You should simply understand those advantages yourself and tell them. That's where the trouble is. You should understand them yourself. There aren't any problems with not having enough time or anything else. Right. I mean, it's very easy. Yes. What is the main problem, in your opinion? Let's put it this way. Our lack of understanding. Our lack of understanding, yes. Our lack of understanding. Our lack of understanding, right. Also, they complicate it somehow. Consciousness complicates everything. It wants it to be… Yes. Yes. If it is literally a transition from the consumerist format to the creative one, hence it is necessary to change something radically. Consciousness doesn't understand that those are just some legislative steps. They are few, but they radically change the paradigm. But on the other hand, you see, yes, they do change it. But here, again, the creative society itself imposes responsibility on us, too. Yes. We won't be allowed to rob, 
or kill anyone, meaning we will have to be humans somehow. Perhaps that's… But people want to be humans. They do. Perhaps. That's what is holding them back. Then there is an alternative, a single world government. You know, many people, when they originally chose science or business, went into those fields with good and wonderful motives. Yes. But they face the fact that there are other rules of the game. Rules of the game, yes. These rules of the game are completely different, and indeed, you are as if stuck in some kind of a computer game where you have to play by these rules. Right. And basically, all people's resources are spent on competing and putting sticks in the wheels of each other. What society development can we talk about? As you've said, these are the rules of the game, yes. which have been forming and existed for 6,000 years. Yes. I mean, now it's impossible to change anything in business. Everyone lives by these rules. Yes. If you start changing something, you will go broke, right? Exactly. You cannot change anything in politics, because you'll be a black sheep, you will be kicked out. In our life, it's impossible to bring something good without being punished for that, let's say, in the consumerist format. That's unrealistic, isn't it? We know that for sure. It's clear that in the creative society everything will be different, but… The collaboration of people, this very power of collaboration. Yes, but people are used to this state of things. There's a habit in laziness to do something. Yes, laziness, right. After all, nothing holds us back. Right. In fact, our stupidity, dumbness and laziness. Yes. These are the only, let's say, three pillars on which the advancement of the creative society on such a rapid and impetuous scale has stalled. After all, within two years, we could have had not millions of us friends, but billions already, right? Wonderful. We could have already been creating the electoral demand and thinking about how our countries would transition to creative development, right? There would have already been no wars or mayhem, even within two years. But during this time we became familiar with misunderstandings that people have. Yes. Right. And those objections which they sometimes have and they… You see, Tatiana, these misunderstandings and objections have been existing for 6,000 years. Right. The same misunderstandings arose among people. Let's say, excuse me, friends, let's digress a little bit from the creative society towards the subject of religion. Isn't that what the prophets who came here talked about? All of them spoke about the creative society. Precisely about that. Well, plus the spiritual aspect. But why do we not live in the creative society? But the creative society actually makes it possible to bring a certain purity into the existing religions. People's responsibility. And to make the prophet's dream come true. You see, that's what we do when we evade a question by switching to another question. Everything is simple. Everything is really simple, friends. If we stop playing around, if we cast away all these stupidities and all the stereotypes imposed on us, then it is very, very easy to build the creative society, isn't it? As a matter of fact, we should have lived in it a long time ago. Tatiana hasn't answered the question, why, when the prophets came, along with the spiritual knowledge, they brought the knowledge of the creative society. And the last prophet, who is said to be the seal of all prophets, spoke about it almost straightforwardly. I mean, everything he said directly relates to the creative society, to building it. Why has it not been implemented? And here's a simple question, what has hindered? Again, those three pillars, right? Our stupidity, our laziness, everything is as always. Shifting responsibility. Yes. Surely, of course, we want someone to do that. It is in our nature. But so that we live well, Yes. you see? But if we want to survive, friends, after all, now there is indeed the issue of survival of the entire humankind. This is not a joke, it's true. So in order for us to survive, we have a choice, you know? either to build the creative society, which means to apply effort. Yes, we should inform, talk to people, communicate, prove it. We ourselves should learn and study what the creative society is yes. and convey that to others. Informing is the most difficult stage. As Robert said, it's the foundation on which the whole building will be erected. That is why it takes so long. Yet there's another option. Well, let's say one option is that we do nothing at all and the consumerist format keeps existing until we cease to exist. Or we will support, we just need to support a single world government. And basically, they will manage to solve this issue. They will manage. All technology, 
and resources are in the same hands, we don't exclude an opportunity that they will also solve it, and we will be able to exist. Isn't that an option too? But not for long. Why not for long? I'll tell you, it can be centuries. In the consumer's format, when there is a single governance, a single world government, the life of the entire humankind may be prolonged for hundreds of years, hundreds. That's the preservation of the consumer's format. As for how it would be afterwards, one should already be able to think and have at least a little bit of a desire to calculate and look at how the single world government will behave. It would still be desirable to fulfill the dream of prophets and God's messengers. And to build the creative society, it would be desirable. The creative society. Right. And to build a world where people are actually free. It would be desirable. Yes, for future children, for all of us. And just look, we all want freedom. We do. We all want happiness for ourselves, our family, Right. our near and dear people, all of us are ready to do our best for that. And many people are ready to die for it, aren't they? Yes. But when it comes to making the first step, the first necessary thing, to inform people, we are lazy. Exactly. So, how can we solve this paradox? Indeed, how? Just open our mouth and speak. There is just nothing difficult about it. Absolutely. Also, when I meet with my friends at work, and they say, I don't understand and don't know what to do and how, but I support. Yes. I say, how many of your friends already know about the Creative Society and there is silence? How can I tell them? Just tell them how you want to live. Or they are waiting until it will be profitable for them to join. Quite right. How many of you are there? Oh yes, that's what they ask. Oh, not yet? I will wait. I will wait a little bit more. Yes. Maybe I will join in the future. When we see yes. that the Creative Society has developed to the point yes. where we are in the majority all over the world, right. Right. that's when they will all begin to join in, won't they? But then they are no longer needed at all. They're joining and their votes no longer decide anything, right? Right. So naturally, if by the right of choice the majority decides for the minority, then being the majority, we can create an electoral demand and actually develop the creative society further. Of course. Without them, right? Right. That's why people themselves, all together, should think about how to properly develop it all and how to stimulate people. How can it be otherwise? We all live in this world. We are all hostages to this situation. Everyone who understands what the Creative Society is, and everyone who understands the doom of the consumerist format, all of us should decide how to proceed and how to actually find a way out of the situation where it seems difficult to find it. Just like now, how to inform all people. In fact, friends, it's very simple, very simple. But it would be good for each and every one of us to invest our own attention in this matter. Right. I mean, together, we would find a lot of other ways that we ourselves are unaware of at the moment. We are unaware of, right. Isn't that right? It is. Because when people meet to have a coffee or something else, anywhere, what do they talk about? About anything. Currently about problems. Simply about problems, about something. Look, everybody talks about problems. Yes. They but do. what if we talk about prospects? About solutions. Exactly. I just wanted to say that. Great, wonderful. There is a huge difference. Perhaps. It's better to tell them about prospects, of course, and about those prospects which are real. And tomorrow, all of that can be our reality. Yes. That's also an option. Yes, of course. Just look, friends, it's very simple, and a lot can be solved if we have a desire, if we properly invest our attention in the right goal, right? Right. So what does the problem consist in? In allocating our attention, right? Right. Right. If we really want something, we will succeed. We just need to invest our attention in that. Absolutely right, friends. Not to be afraid. And not to be afraid. Right. So, friends, stop being afraid and everything will be fine. Thank you. Thank you for visiting us today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Igor Mikhailovich. Thank you, Igor Mikhailovich, for all the knowledge, for everything. Because if you hadn't told us about the Creative Society, we wouldn't know that we can live differently. You knew that. That we can build it. I am not sure we would have known about that. You knew, and we talked about it many times here. It's just that, do you know what the trouble is? The trouble is that we as humanity have a far too short memory and far too big desires and ambitions. But that's also good. Let us channel our desires and ambitions into the right direction. 
into building the Creative Society. Thank you, friends, for being with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.